Welcome back. It's good to know that she's still watching the run-up today. Uh, barely 24 hours after Senator Ademola Adeleke assumed office, he took some tough decisions, as we would like to call it, uh, which included freezing the state's accounts, reversing appointments made by his predecessor, and abolishing the name of the state. You know, at, at the time it was called the state of Oshun, and he returned it to Oshun State. Uh, Adeleke also signed six ex executive orders yesterday affirming the reversal of the appointment appointments made by ex-governor Adeboyega Oyetola and further sacking some 12,000 workers said to have been illegally employed. Those sacked included 30 permanent secretaries, while chairman of the State Independent Electoral Commission, Shegu uh, Oladeton, and its members were suspended. The governor also dethroned three monarchs whose installations were allegedly controversial. Uh, what are the implications of these policies? These are what we will be discussing today. And uh, joining us to have this conversation on the program t this morning is Mr. Ayo Olugun. He's a spokesperson, Transparency and Accountability Group. Uh, you're very welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you for having me. And we also have Barrister Tunji abdul Mead. He's a legal practitioner and public affairs commentator. You're very welcome, sir. Thank you, Evelyn. Good morning. All right. Uh, let us start with you, uh, Mr. Tunji. Uh, we're going to be getting your both reactions. How do you react, you know, to these actions taken by the very recent governor of Ocean State? And, you know, judging, looking from the legal angle, does he have, is it legally allowed to take these decisions just at getting into office and, you know, making such changes? Is it legally allowed? Yeah, it, it is allowed for a new, newly sworn governor to make uh, changes and appointments, mm. in line, uh, especially in line with its uh, administration. But if we have to give the decision right now, it's not all the, the step taking that we see as a a proper legal backing, as far as I, I, I am concerned. So, if I want to talk about the the, the legal implication of all these steps, I think we have to look at them one after the other. For instance, the the refreshing of the the freezing. Of, let's start from the freezing of the accounts. The governor has the right to freeze the accounts, at least to prevent a further drawer or, or from the account and to be able to monitor what is in the account pending when it will, it will settle down. Uh, similarly, reversing the name of the states, I think is in order, as far as I am concerned. It is, it's in life, it's in order, notwithstanding the, the what's it called, the, the, the reason that the, the, the opposition from the House of Assembly, you, the, 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 the name, the name known to, and, and, and our constitution, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about constitution of federal government in 1999, is Osun State, not State of Osun. So what I'm saying that is that the name State of Osun is unknown to our constitution, it's illegal, and has no basis under our law. And that 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 are, are relying at any government relying on the law made by our assembly to change the name of a state is like amending the constitution of the Republic of Nigeria, mm. and which is not within their power. So the for any name of a state to change, it must be from the National Assembly. It must be by amendment of the constitution. So if there is no amendment of the constitution, no matter what color you give to it, whether it's out of assembly or whether government governor, governor's uh, directive or whatever, it can't it's not it's not possible. It's illegal, it's unconstitutional. It must be in line with the constitution. So as far as I'm concerned, the reversing of the name. In fact, let me even tell you that in 2017, a lawyer was in court to challenge the name. The name, the lawyer is uh, uh, Camille Ajibola. He went to court to challenge that uh, the state of Oslo is not known to the constitution. And uh, the court said yes. The court agreed with him in 2020. Yet, because we have impunity in this country, nobody bothered to, 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 to enforce a the judgment of the court in that in that aspect. So the governor coming now to say go back to the names of two states is not is not doing anything untoward. It's not doing anything illegal. It's not doing anything unconstitutional. He's just trying to ensure that look the constitution which he, uh, he has sworn to uphold is being protected and is being uh, uh, aligned with. So as far as I'm concerned, in that regard, is is it's, it's on the right path in that in that in that sense. Because people have to even be in position to to say look, I, I like for example, I'm, I'm, I I have uh, to give uh, a two state any, any anything from the federation. I may refuse them on the other ground if they continue to use the name state of person because it's not known to our constitution. So that way, you are giving you are giving money or whatever you are giving to unknown person, to unknown state. 
that is not known in our conscience. So as far as I'm concerned, I, I give him a password in that in that uh, a, a, a password in that in that in that in a mark in that regard. Okay. Then the issue of uh, sacking of the permanent secretary, that one too is 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 back is 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 back by law. It's legal. He can he can he can, he can sack the permanent secretary. But that we must we must, we must, we must make a decision here. The, if you look at section two o eight, subsection two. C of the Constitution of the United States, the 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 power to appoint or remove certain people is affected on the on the governor, and which of which permanent secretary is one of them. So in other words, the governor has the right to he has the power to appoint them, and also has the right to remove them. The one who say remove here, he cannot sack them as a civil servant. Mm. He can only remove them as a permanent secretary. Because being a permanent secretary, you are, you are at the highest uh, ladder of your, of, of your career. So if you are now removed as permanent secretary, you can on your own now say you are resigning or you are leaving the service. But it's not within the power of the governor to sack any civil servant. Sacking or punishment or punishing a civil servant is within the uh, power prerogative of, uh, of, the, of the civil service commission, not the governor. So and they must go through procedure. So you can't just wake up one day and say, as a governor, I'm sacking you as a civil servant. No. You, you must go through the processes. There are processes, and that, that is by under the civil service uh, commission. In other words, so which which means that the twelve thousand employees that have been sacked by the governor, as far as I'm concerned, is not bad by law. It's not it's not supported by law because for you to serve, to, to to terminate a, a or sack a civil servant, you must there, there are processes that must be followed. I'm All not right. aware those processes have been followed. I'm not aware those, the civil service commission are the one who are saying they should go. So the governor is not within the already power of the governor to just sack. A civil servant just like that. Though I'm not talking about, I'm talking about legal, legal, legal implication of it. I'm not talking about the morality. Because some people will say, is it proper for somebody who's going uh, 12, 22, 24 hours to, to, to his time to appoint people? Yes, that is that is immoral. That is illegal. And that, that, that is immoral. That is not normal. But I'm talking law now. I'm talking law. Is it bad by law? What the doctor? So. Yes. You want uh, to ask me a question? Yes, I, I would get back to you, yeah? But I, I'd also like to get the reaction of Mr. Ayo Olugun. Uh, Mr. Ayo, uh, first, your reactions to these, you know, pronounce, uh, pronouncements made by the new governor. And do you think that these policies in any way are detrimental to the people of Oshun State? Uh, thank you very much. I absolutely agree with um, a number of um, positions taken by the learned person who has just spoken, except for a few places where he got it wrong. First and foremost, um, the pronouncement within the account of the government is the norm. Because when, when, you, when you speak about um, to the Nagura address, some of the decisions and policy statements that he made at the Nagura speech, some of them are either norms or uh, enforcing what, exa what exactly has been the legal position. And one of these is the phrasing of account is the norm. Any government that comes in has the right to phrase the account, spending the time it can look into the books to ascertain exactly what the financial situation of the state is. And also, talking about um, his decision to change the name of the state, that is premised already on a subsisting judgment. Just like he made an allusion to Barista Kamiya Ajibola has taken the state government to court under the leadership of Raul Varebe Shola to challenge the use of the name state of Russia and the court has ruled that that is illegal and uh, the, the, the proper thing and what is known to the law is Russian state. So the governor delegate was only um, enforcing or making um, pronouncement on what exactly the law has taken the position upon. Uh, so whatever the House of Assembly is doing, we, we, we get it wrong. I think the position of the House of Assembly by the release that I saw from there yesterday is not necessarily about the Russian state or state of Russia because they made an allusion in that press statement that that is still in court. I think there's an appeal going on on it and they will not comment on that. And what the Assembly made, talked about was the acronym of the state. You will recall that under Governor Yilola, the state used to be known as the state of the living spring. And when our Farabe Shola came, he, by the occasion of the promulgation of the House of Assembly, changed it to state of the virtuous. And that is what the Assembly is saying, that if you must reverse back to the state of the living spring, it has to go through the legality of the promulgation of law by the House of Assembly to change it from the state of the virtuous back to the state of the living spring. It's important to say that. I want to talk about the decision of the, of the governor to sack... Uh, um, or to, to make it another. In that um, speech, there is um, a contradiction in the in, in the decisions or the promulgations made by the governor. Somewhere in between his inaugural speech, he, he made a beat that all appointments and contracts dated from 17 July when it was announced elected. So the Sunday when he was um, um, sworn in, uh, should revert back to the status quo. 
And somewhere along again in the same inaugural speech, he did say that he was going to set up a committee to review such appointments and contracts. And I dare say that that latter part is the legal thing to do. What he can do is to set up a committee to review some of the decisions taken by his predecessor and not outrightly making promulgations for reversal to the status quo. Up until 26th of November, the immediate past administration, the governor of the state of Aden, has the power. The power of the governor didn't end when he lost election. His power ended on the 26th of November. So whatever decision he took between the time he lost election to when his tenure expired, as far as the law is concerned, is still valid. So if, as a new governor, you must re review um, those things, it has to be to the legal process. And just like the lawyer has said, he does not possess the power to sack permanent secretaries from the civil service. And I think that was the wrong, that was the wrong use of word in the statement he issued before his wearing it, that as soon as he steps into office on Monday, he was going to stand there for the civil service. The governor doesn't have such power. Mm. But the power he has is to review and ask them to revert back as directors or coordinators, as the case may be, and not having the power to outrightly sack them from the civil service. That would amount to effective rascality. And I hope the governor and his handlers understand that. And also, when you speak to the issue of the sack of some others, you can look at it from, from two ways. You can look at the political correctness of it, and you can look at the legality of it. And I dare say this that our leaders, our politicians should learn that uh, political correctness does not supersede legality. No, no matter how political correct decisions may be, if it's illegal, it stands uh, invalid. And that is one of such. You will recall that the appointment of the area of Ikele, for example, followed the appointment of nine others in a day. The former governor has appointed nine of them. So if you are singling out a number of the others appointed the same day, and you are leaving order. Morally, the question would be, what have those ones done wrong and the others have not done? If nine kings were appointed on the same day and you sing it out about two or three of them for their appointment to be reversed and you leave the others, what have they done? If you are saying the decision of the former governor is not right, then it is expected that it will affect the entire nine and not you singling out one and leaving the others. And also, further speaking to that issue, it is known that the executive VAT or executive order cannot sack an order. What the, the, the position of an oba rests under the authority of the local government. It's only the local government authority that have the power to 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 sack an oba or to dethrone an oba if he's found guilty of any offense whatsoever. The other person or the other authority that has the power to sack an oba is the court of law, and that is why we have a lot of traditional institution cases has lasted ten to fifteen years over time between maybe the, the incumbent and maybe another family or the time as the case may be. So I think it's a must to effective rascality to just wake up and begin to dash others. As much as some of those things are legal and in tune, there are some other pronouncements that has made that is not legal. And I dare say it again, that we must not sacrifice legality on the altar of political correctness. All right. Uh, let me get back to you, um, Mr. Tunji abdul uh, These These policies that he made, most of which, uh, some of which you pointed out to, you know, be legally uh, viable. But then, what would you say will, you know, what significance will these policies have, you know, to your own opinion? How do you think this will affect the success of, you know, Adelike's time as governor of Ocean State? Yeah, you see, you cannot, we cannot, we have to take them one after the other. Mm. If you are looking at the infusion of account, like I said earlier on, it is for him to, to, to be able to ensure that, look, that accounts are in cut pending when he will settle down. The issue of the uh, state uh, or, or the name of the state, yeah, he may not, he may not have enough, any economic value, but it is to show that, look, he is working in line with the law. He's upholding the tenant of the constitution uh, and obeying the court order because there, are, there, is an order, there is a court order which says it must be the first. There is no, there is not, there was not even any basis for it to be, to be done before because you must amend the constitution for that uh, so if you, are, if you talk about that, then you can say it's so. The issue of permanent secretary and the sorry, uh, simple that you, you know, it, it, I see it as a trap from the former uh, governor, like mm. like the like the, like 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 Mr. Ayo said, the the governor up until one hour to his expiration of his tenure has the power to do whatever he wants to, to appoint or to even sack or do whatever he wants to do. So appointing them is within his power. He has the right to appoint them. But the governor does not appoint. Up to that, uh, to, to, uh, uh, appoint, uh, I'm not aware he appointed up to 12,000 uh, uh, people before within the seven years, within the three years uh, or three and a half or uh, almost four years in, his, in office, waking up in a day to just appoint 12,000 people. He just tried to create a, a, a trap for the coming government. Where would the money come from to pay their salary? Because if you look at the salary, let, let's even assume 
one of the, one takes a minimum wage of ten thousand naira times twelve thousand. That would be billions of naira. So monthly, and where would the state get the money from? He, he doesn't care. You want to set a trap for the state to, uh, for the incoming governor to, to face. You appoint a permanent secretary. When you are, when you have uh, 20, 24 hours to go, yes, you have the power to appoint. You have the, the, power, the power to do that. But I see that uh, as a, a kind of uh, um, uh, bad, in bad faith. That appointment, was, as far as I'm concerned, was done in bad faith. You have left it for the incoming governor to do that since you are you have just 24 hours to go. So as far as I'm concerned, they 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 they, they have the implication that uh, 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 is that look. The state may find it difficult to pay the salary of those people. The state may find it difficult to implement its policy because those permanent secretary appointed may not have the same uh, interest with the coming governor. So the governor will want to look at people and then uh, take negative steps to ensure that too, people that work with him are people that are aligned with his personal uh, ambition and, and, and interest or, or, or that will develop the, the state. Right. So as far as I'm concerned, we well, you know for that they, some of them are, they are legally correct. Mm -hmm. that there are some moral and the uh, a, a aspect of it that will have a, 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 a bad implication for the states. Um, Mr. Tunji, let me get your reaction now because we're actually rounding off now, gentlemen. Uh, let us look at it from the perspective of those who have been employed. It's been established. Uh, a governor, a sitting governor, has the power to make appointments even up to the last minute of his stay in office. Fine. But look at the perspective of the persons who have been you know, appointed or employed at this time. And then, you know, with such short notice, the, the uh, appointment or uh, employment is terminated. Do these people have the legal right to sue or how do they go about it? Like, you cannot just employ me and under three months, you're giving me a sack letter again. What is my position as a person who, who has been appointed or employed? If, they, if those people were properly appointed by the governor, uh, they, they went through the normal process of uh, appointment of uh, appointment. I think they have a legal, uh, 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 they have they have a right to go to court because, like I said earlier on, the governor is not within the power, power of the governor to sack civil servants. Mm -hmm. The service, service uh, disciplinary action against civil servants should be taken by by the civil service commission up, up after certain processes have been followed. So the person to sack civil servants will have to go through the civil service, and they must be given fair hearing. It's not just you just can't just wake up in the morning and say you are sad because you are appointed by a social uh, governor or this and that. So as far as I'm concerned, they have a grant to go to court. But unfortunately, you know we are in Nigeria. The they going to court, the 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 uh, we don't. I'm, I'm I'm sorry to say, the our judiciary is not that independent to be able to hold his 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 his, his, uh, his, his grant and say look, this is proper. This is not this is not proper. Sometimes judge court court also look at the economic consequences of it. And then they may, based on that, say uh, it's not be, it will be difficult for the governor to implement. And they, they, because of that, we want to agree that uh, it was a bad done in bad faith. Mm. But legally speaking, legally speaking, they have the right to say, look, they have been unjustly terminated. Uh, the appointment oh. has been unjustly terminated, or the, the process of terminating the appointment did not follow due, due, due process of law. So okay. if they can, they, they have the right to go to court to challenge it. To challenge it. Yeah, Mr. Ayo, let me get your reaction too. Uh, you, you are the spokesperson for Transparency and Accountability Group. So I'm sure your group, you know, has dealt with issues like this as well. How do you react to, you know, from my question, the perspective of those who've been employed or who has been, you know, given the appointment and in, with such, such short notice, it's being terminated? What's your reaction to that? I think it is, it is very important to, first of all, get the authority of the numbers that is being brandished around. Uh, the news has carried it since yesterday that 12,000 workers are being asked to leave the civil service by the new governor. And the spokesperson of the immediate past governor has come out to challenge the new government to say, look, we did not employ 12,000. So the question would be, just like it is said in the law, if the alleges must prove. So if you Governor Dumaladeke is alleging that 12,000 people were unjustly employed or hurriedly, rather, employed into the civil service at the twin light, of the administration of Governor Wittola. I think it is important that clarity should be sought in that line. There is a need for the government of Governor Demola Delike to come out and state exactly who the 12,000 are. Mm -hmm. Tell us their names, tell us the ministries, parastatas, and agencies to which they've been employed so that we can get clarity on the veracity of the claim of 12,000. That's number one. Number two, it is also very important that we should understand as a people that if it does like the lawyers say, it is if the process by which those individuals were employed was in the process was fully followed as laid down by the principles of the civil service, it becomes illegal 
for the new governor to outrightly sack them because they have the right as citizens of the state to be employed into the civil service. They applied. We must not forget that some of these people we are talking about are people that applied for teaching service job under the last administration. They went through the process of screening, the road tests, and what have you. So if they've gone through all this process and their employment to the civil service has been legally proven, then it becomes impossible for any governor to, by via of executive order, sack them from the civil service. What needs to be done is that, uh, what, what will be done is that these individuals will go to court to challenge their expulsion or their, their sack from the civil service even before taking up the job and they are likely going to win because it's within the power of the immediate past administration to employ. Right. And so if they were properly employed, the new government cannot really sack them without going through the laws and going through the process of the civil service employment and civil service rule. All right. Uh, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Thank you so much for sharing your ideas and your perspectives with us this morning on the run-up. Uh, we really appreciate your presence. Thank you so much for coming by. Thank you very thank much. You very all right, and it is still the run-up. Uh, the news will come up at noon. Uh, after the news, the run-up will return and we will continue having interesting conversations. Do not go anywhere. Stay with us. <laughs>